welcome to Foley Day 5, I think it is. Wow. I'm going to start off by doing ADR today. I hope that it doesn't weigh the neighbours. <laughs> Blanket vocal booth. Microphone pointing at it. I've covered the TV with another duvet. I suddenly realised the TV is very flat and big and it could have been reflecting from behind the mic, which might have affected the sound a little. I wish I'd thought of that a few days ago, but never mind. There's the workstation. If I look at the screen, you can see the project's getting quite large with lots of stuff on it. Um, in fact, we're almost there. We're doing very well with the Foley now. There's just one or two little gaps I have to fill and then I'll be ready. Today, um, apart from setting fire to the top of my head with this LED light, I'm going to um, do the ADR and we've got the splat spike noise. That's tricky. I don't know whether I'll do that tonight. I'm thinking of watermelons and things, but I might just download a sample. I've got to do a yawn and stretch from me. Louis Panting. Of course, it would be better to have him here to do that, but I'm not going to be able to do that. There's his grunt when he's throwing the bottle. I think I can use one of his karate grunts for that, so there's no problem. Um, today, I spent a lot of time. It's Saturday today. I don't think I've left the house once. <laughs> I spent a lot of time basically um, putting all the effects on in Cubase, adjusting all the levels, making sure nothing clips, getting rid of as much background noise as I can, using compressors and expanders and all kinds of things, and basically cleaning it up and cleaning it up. It's still not mixed, all the levels are still slightly wrong, and there's no panning, but I'm beginning to be very happy with the sound of this film. It's really going to be quite something. So. Without further ado, I guess, uh, get on with the ADR and everything else. Here we go. One, two, one, two. So, onwards and through the night. Um, I can't use my jeans, they're too heavy. They won't sound like a child's jeans. We'll see. I was just about to start and I suddenly realised I could hear my disc drive. So move the duvet to try and cover it up. As used by all the best B-list celebrities making charity singles. Ah. <laughs> Let's see. I'm sorry I keep looking over there. I'm looking over there because that's where the viewfinder is and I'm checking my frame because it won't turn that one so I can't see. Now I can talk to you. <laughs> it's very distracting. Sound is on, the vision starts. The image dance starts once again. I'll probably find out I'm too far from the mic or something now. It's the phony aerobics. I don't have Louis for the panting, so um, <laughs> there's really only one way to do this. I'll have what I'm having. I feel all light-headed and I need a glass of water. Do not leave that in the edit. This is probably the best I've ever been lit, isn't it? On this camera. I'd be surprised because I'm standing right next to a new daylight bulb that I bought. And the daylight bulb's a bit dangerous actually because it keeps you awake during the night while you're doing this stuff. And it's only when you suddenly go to bed that you suddenly realise how tired you really are. Do you understand? One day when I'm rich and famous, I'll have a studio with a separate live room. Didn't quite set fire to it, almost. Oh, hello again. Okay, the Foley is now all recorded, yay! And we're down to sound mixing and um, stereo positioning, which is what I'm doing now. So basically this involves, um, I've got a thing called a stereo imager 
on every single sound channel in the mix. Um, those sources that were already mono, I've thickened them up into stereo by using doublers. And those, these are things like clothing moves and footsteps. If you can make them stereo, then you can control the stereo width afterwards. And it has a lot of good effects, as I'll explain. What I do is this stereo imager has three parameters which I can automate over time using graphs. Um, so I automate the rotation, which is basically left to right, so that follows the sound source on the screen. The gain, so that's the volume basically, and the closer it is to you, um, the higher the gain. And also the third one, which is a bit more subtle, the width. Now what I do with that is when the sound source is close to you, I not only increase the gain, but I increase the width as well especially for things like footsteps because they kind of make the whole ground sort of dust kicks up everywhere whatever whatever the reason it sounds more realistic if they're wider when they're close to you you hear hear them across the stereo field when they're right next to you as they go into the distance it becomes narrower because you're, you're hearing them from a specific direction and that seems to work really well so that's what i've been doing and i've just finished doing that to all the footsteps and clothing moves um, I've still got to do it to all the other sound effects, which is a lot of stuff. So I'm probably about halfway through the sound, uh, the non-music sound mix now. Uh, it's taken me a day, so it'll probably be another day or two before I finish that. Once I've done that, that's it. I can write the music, and pff, after that we're down to um, actually putting the thing together finally, which is going to be great. So um, you can probably tell I'm more uh, more positive now because I, I'm not having to do late nights recording anymore, which is quite a relief, let me tell you. I can work in the evenings, so that's good. Um, uh, not much else to say, really. I'm going to get on with this really fast and do another time lapse for you so you can see, uh, well, basically how much is involved, but speed it up. <laughs> Time for a quick coffee. That's better. Um, yeah, I'm getting on all right. I've made a start on the miscellaneous now. I've, I've just been doing some of the um, foliage and body sounds. So they're, they're done. Now I'm only doing things like, uh, what are they? Oh yeah, lots of um, branch creaks and gory splats and spot effects. So that won't take very long. Um, Oh yes, and then uh, there's props, vocal and wildlife after that. They're fairly large categories, um, so I don't know whether I'll finish tonight. I'd like to go to bed at a fairly reasonable time, so... <laughs> Using expanders can be terribly frustrating when you've got a bad recording. <laughs> driving me crazy. <laughs> the problem here is a particular recording I made using a wet sponge called Monster Wetness. Um, <laughs> it's just general kind of nasty monster noise. Uh, the problem is that I recorded it and it was very quiet even though the sponge was right next to the microphone I, I was picking up mains hum so I'm now trying to remove the mains hum so that I can get the expander to work properly without it going <laughs> in the background all the time. Yeah, it's a real pain. Um, chances are when you actually watch the film there'll be music all over that sound anyway, you won't know. Let me show you. This will be a bit wobbly. Sorry about that. Got no glide cam. It's a comb filter. What it does is it removes the 50 hertz harm and all its harmonics. And it seems to have done the trick, which is brilliant. Here's the expander I'm using. It's got a ridiculously steep curve. You can see the little white bits jumping around down there. That's the background noise. And the signal itself is only getting slightly above them. 
So this is the problem, you have to try and separate the two. I had this problem when I was restoring a cassette tape. Those of you watching who are in my family will know which one I mean. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is a good 15 minutes of work, I think. There, I finally got it. <laughs> The sound of Louis' feet hitting the style now matches the picture of Louis' feet hitting the style. <sighs> Miscellaneous is done, on to props. That's mainly the bag that I'm carrying, but also noises of Louis plastic bottle and me sketching. Just this sketching one's gonna be a pain actually. It doesn't quite sound right at the moment. <laughs> It's all done. Um, I need to check it back. And then I'll go to bed by which time it'll be 2 a.m. Yeah, how long have I spent on this? Check the camera. It's been nearly three hours. It will have been by the time I do this. It will have been three hours since I began this video clip. Unbelievable. Right. Here we go. Hey. Here's an idea. Do you want to see the whole film speeded up? Was absolutely excellent I'm really pleased but the sound has come out so well uh, you know I must have spent at least 20 hours continuous on it and it shows I think I'm gonna take quite a big break before I do the music because uh, I'm too close to it at the moment I need to step back but yeah okay uh, Four minutes past two, I have work, so I will sign off now. Yep, another successful evening, got a lot done. 
check some levels tomorrow and then I'll kind of leave it alone for a day or two. Bye now. <laughs>